Hey, everyone. It's Azure here. Happy Monday. Good morning. Yeah, happy Monday. So this is, excuse me. <coughs> Sit up on here a little bit ago. So this is day 27 of the Vegas shutdown. And uh, I thought it was day 26. I don't remember that yesterday was day 26. Anyways, so it is Monday, April 13, 2020. It's 0400 hours and four minutes here in Las Vegas. Uh, we wake up early, so. Do you need some water? No, I'm okay, thank you. Okay. Um, we kind of live odd hours here in Vegas. We actually just kind of sleep throughout the day at different times, and then, so we're always up very crazy hours here. So basically, uh, 22,000 dead with the yeah, virus. Yeah, yeah. And did you, did you tell them about the, uh, the proje new projections? Like the, the top Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get into that, yeah. Way less. So, the virus. Um, still, okay, so uh, I guess we're around 20,000 or something um, that have died in the U.S. For those numbers... That we said, for one thing, all of those numbers, remember, are exaggerated because they're counting anyone that dies uh, from anything if they've contracted the coronavirus, if they've died from anything else, they're counting those as corona deaths. So what that means is, like, if they got the virus and they recovered, and let's say they died in an automobile accident, they're counting it as a corona death because they're saying, well, they had the coronavirus and they died. So you see how, like, they can say... Oh, they had the coronavirus, and they died. Yeah, but they didn't die from the coronavirus. So they're all counting these deaths, and you say, oh, well, why would they do that? Well, for one thing, the hospitals uh, get more funding the more they have these cases because they're getting additional funding for the healthcare workers and stuff. So the more they can exaggerate how many deaths and stuff, then the more funding they're getting for this coronavirus from the government because, you know, they're having to pay the workers, they're having to have all these supplies and stuff, so they're actually giving money to the hospitals, if you guys didn't know that they are, the government is, so, um, what they're finding out, they're starting to do projections, I guess, and they're saying it will not be more than 60,000 in the U.S., which is way less than they had ever said before. They were saying before it was going to be like 250,000 dust in the U.S. or 500,000. Like they were saying these crazy numbers. And now I guess the new projections are like 60,000 would be tops, which the normal flu is at 50,000. They're saying this was just projection that, that they're saying that would be the tops now. That's just what they're projecting. So it's still just about in line with the flu virus. Um, even if it tops out to 60,000, because the regular flu virus kills 50,000. I guess right now we're around 20-something thousand. I don't, I don't know the exact numbers. But like I said, it's hard to know because every day they're kind of fudging those numbers too. So the actual number is even less than the numbers that are coming out because they are using more than um, just the coronavirus of people that are dying from that. They're, like I said, they're using it. If you contracted the virus and you died from anything else, then they're counting that as coronavirus death. And here's the thing. We've had this virus now. We found out since November in um, the U.S. and especially in California. And people got it and recovered and didn't think anything of it. And then come March in February, we started, you know, in February they started talking about in China and we start freaking out here in March about it more and shut down all the NBA in March. That was the first initial thing that w what happened, which really messed up Vegas, is they shut down all the NBA. And a March Madness is one of the best times in Vegas. It's like Vegas is Christmas. It's better than any time of the year for everything. Like that's when all of the businesses here make the majority of their money. Well, now they didn't get to do that this year, so that's another big deal. So this was not only like bad, like it was the worst timing for Vegas. This is the best time of year for Vegas. And then the summer is actually very slow for Vegas. People don't know that. They assume Vegas is very busy during the summer, but it's extremely hot. So you get more just the college kids that are willing to come when it's 120 degrees, but not the average person wants to come when it's 120 degrees. So the summers tend to be slower, but March and April and May are the best time in Vegas because the weather is beautiful. Usually it's been very cold this year ever since all this happened. If you think the universe is not involved, you know, in this, then you'd be like, how come it, like, it was weird. The first three days that they did this shutdown, it was like 
so cloudy and dreary. Even, like, the first week was so nasty here in Vegas. And I was like, wow, that's weird for March. Um, and the actually, the environment has been greatly uh, uh, affected in a better way since the, all these shutdowns because we shut down so many, uh, like, factories and things and pollutants. And people aren't driving their cars as much. So they've already seen a lot of improvement in, like, the quality of the air and just the overall. I don't know how they measure all of the environmental things, but they're seeing improvements drastic. Because what happened when Trump became president is they started amping up on a lot of the things that are pollutants to the environment, like coal. They started using coal again more than they were because, you know, we have a lot more environmentally friendly ways to do things, but generally the cheaper way will be not as environmentally friendly. And when you have a president that likes to do the cheap way, make the most money, and they started to do it, him and his friends, you know, amped up the coal. And like I said, I'm not political, so I don't like Trump or any of the Democrats. So um, I don't vote. Um, so I'm not trying to sway you guys anyway when I'm talking about one politician or another. I'm honestly giving my opinion of all of the politicians, and I don't like any of them. Um, because not personally, personally it's not, it's not like, I don't really care what they do in their personal life. It's what I'm seeing, the actions they've done in office is what I'm not liking um, for uh, several people. Uh, one being Trump did quite a few things I didn't like. Um, he's done some things that uh, other people didn't like that I agree with. So, you know, um, like I agreed with him when he said this virus was a hoax in the beginning. And everyone jumped on Trump's case and said he wasn't being a good president, wasn't looking out for us, and all the Dems act like, oh, gosh, he doesn't care about your lives. So then, of course, he had to act and make a big deal, and that's why it got so extreme. Um, but he was right. It was a hoax from China in the sense of it's um, not a deadly, most severe virus we've ever seen. All Those kind of things are lies. And when you look at the numbers, it's very easy to be tricked by the number, the big numbers. And the big numbers are people that are affected by it. Those are not people that have died. And those people, the larger portion have recovered than have died, like substantially larger. So if you see a number like worldwide where you'll see 1.3 million or whatever, I don't even know what the numbers are now, probably 2 million, whatever number they're coming out is the, like the craziest number. That's who got the flu virus, okay? That is not who died. So be very careful to not fall in the trap of thinking the big numbers are the people that have died. They'll do that for how many affected in the U.S.? It'll be 500,000. 500,000 people got the coronavirus, and they just, you know, only uh, this deadly virus. And then you look at the numbers below. Um... 400 something thousand have recovered you know and uh or you know whatever the numbers are and and then you'll only see you know 20,000 have actually died which the normal flu virus kills 50,000 people a year they are saying at a max now they're saying this one will kill at a max 60,000 in the US that's the new numbers that are coming out of their projections so all that would be would just a tad be, be a tad over the flu virus, which I don't believe it's any over the flu virus, um, if it even gets to those numbers, because like I said, they're they are exaggerating the numbers. They're counting people that are dying from other things. Like, if I got the flu virus right now, recovered, and then died in a uh, car accident, they would say I died from the coronavirus. And, you know, people are recovering. Look at Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks. That's Tom Hanks' wife. They had it. I believe they're in their 60s or close to their 60s. They're not there yet. Um, and they recovered, and now she's doing rap songs. She does, she teamed up with Naughty by Nature because she, I guess, knew one of their songs, you know, and she's in the studio recording. She had the coronavirus in uh, March. She's fine now. And that's how a ton of people are. And we're not hearing about those people as much. We're only hearing, oh, this old person died. Or this person with a super bad immune, um, uh, super bad immunity died, you know, and had immune deficiencies. Those are the people that always die from the flu every year. Those are the people that die from anything that comes around, like the common cold, 
will kill those people that are already that sick. And that's who's dying from the coronavirus. And people don't want to look at those numbers. They just they just want to believe the the bigger horrific things, you know, like they want it to be bigger. It's like, oh, because why did we shut down the world if it's not so big? So people now want it to be bigger. You know what I'm saying? Like even like I'm not even saying like the politicians, I'm saying everyone, they go, they want it to be bigger because then if it's not, then they realize they maybe lost their job for nothing. And that's the reality. I want to interject something. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, <coughs> Excuse me. Noel from France is a big fan. And they want to know when the next time you're going to do the Cardi B coronavirus song again. Oh, are you serious? You guys liked the rap? Yeah, they're a fan of the Cardi B. You're from serious. France. Great. I'll do that today. I didn't know you guys enjoyed the singing. All right. I could do it right now if you wanted to, but I uh, will. <laughs> I guess we could. Right now. Are you yeah, serious? Are you sitting or do you have to stand? I, I, stand. I, can, I, mean, I can sit. Why don't you stand? Get up. Get up. I have to stand. Yeah. yeah. You guys want me to do Cardi B real quick? Yeah, do Cardi B. Look, I want to Cardi B real quick. Okay. You enjoyed that, huh? Well, that makes me feel good. Right in the middle of this. All right, I don't know if everyone's ready for my singing, but here you go. Okay. Look at this chair. Here you go. Look at these other guys sit up here. You never know what you're going to get on J.I. George. All right. Okay. Oh, now I need to plug in my Going. Oh, they're excited. Oh my god, LMG, yes, she's real excited. Her name is No Noel. 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 N-A-W-E-L. And actually, they're funny, they're on Periscope. And and they, and they said I'm from France. And they said, Oh, do you know Bayette City? And and they started talking, and she actually knew the person Who? on Periscope. They knew each other. Oh, the two people knew. But they didn't know each other on Periscope. They just oh, knew each I other. See what they're, you're like, I, they're like, oh, you're from France? What part of France? I thought you were saying Vegas okay. City. You know, I I am from Vegas City. What's your name? Oh my God! That's awesome. Oh, huh, was that funny? Yeah. Hey, thanks, guys. I, I need to sing. Am I still in the camera? Yeah, I'm you, in the okay. camera right now. Is this chair in the way? Is that chair in the way? Uh, Trying to get out of the way, but there's too much stuff over here. You guys ready for this? I have to move everything. Okay, so. All right, guys. I didn't know you guys enjoyed this. You want me? To, I could probably do. I know. Uh, the only ones I really know that well are Cardi B, Eminem, and. Um, they want. They request it specifically so, Cardi, Cardi B. B. Yeah. Oh no, no, we're doing Cardi B, but yeah. I didn't know. Sometimes I want to do more than one. You know. Well, yeah, we'll roll in that next. We'll see what they want. Cardi. I'm gonna Bodak try, Yellow. I'm gonna turn on a little bit in here. Change it to say Jedi because first I used to use her words. Because I thought, well, I want to not change it, but then I just didn't feel comfortable saying the N word because I just don't feel comfortable saying that. That's I'm a white person, so I changed it to Jedi. So every time she uses the N word, I put it in Jedi for you guys. Hey, I don't see you. Ooh, what's going on with the sound? We have a problem with the music here. Uh, we'll have to do it this way. Or they'll have to turn on the music mm -hmm. too. No, we'll do it this way. We'll do it on the little. The little guy. Uh oh, can you get out of so there? A little bit of an issue here. Hold on, guys. Hope you guys don't mind. This is what happens. We weren't planning on doing See, it. See, this so. is what happens when we, because it actually takes a second to set up the music. That's why yeah. it's harder to do requests. Not that we want it, it's just Jerry has to get them all set up. Uh, that's why people have sometimes wanted to request certain songs as much as we want to do it. It's like he has to go get the music. It's not as easy as just karaoke where he's got the thing and he just picks it, you know, or just a little more complicated, especially to have it go through so you guys can hear it and stuff. But this will be fun. Gets me out of my chair. But yeah, so I guess I'll just keep talking about the virus while he's getting set up. So, here you go. Oh. You're coming right here. You're just going to play it on this. Oh, okay. Play, play, the, play the volume on this and this. That, that'll work. Oh, I'll just do that. Yeah, yeah. That'll, you can do it that way. They'll be able to hear it. They'll hear it through here. So Through here, so yeah. I need to put it by you guys then. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put it, give it to me. Why don't you bring over the little jam speaker? Or those because it's time enough. to go. It's okay, time to go. Enough. We don't want it much louder okay. anyways. It's early morning. Yeah, that's true. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. If you wanted to, these expensive, these is red bottoms, these is bloody shoes. If it's a store, I can get them both. I don't wanna choose, and I'm quick. Cut a Jedi off, so don't get comfortable. Look, I don't dance now, I make money moves. 
say I don't gotta dance. I make money, man. If I see you and I don't speak, that means I don't fuck with you. I'm a boss, you a walker, bitch. I make bloody moves. Now she says, see, gonna do what I do. Let's find out and see. Cardi B, you know where I'm at. You know where I be. You in the club just to party. I'm there, I get paid for I be in and out and make so much I know the time. Honestly, don't give a fuck about who ain't fun of me. Drop two mistakes and so much what bitches working as hard as me. I don't bother with these hoes, don't let these hoes bother me. They say pictures, they say go, bitch I'm who they trying to be. Look, I'm at your still to bet, I'm at your still with your boot. My pussy feel like a leg, he wanna swim on the face, swim on the face. I'm like okay, I like him, get we want. He buy me a silver and a new whip, when it goes fast as a horse. I get the junk in the trunk, I'm the hottest in the street. Know you probably heard of me, got a bag and fix my teeth. Hope you hoes know it ain't cheap And I pay my mama bills I ain't got no time to chill Think these hoes be mad at me They baby father wanna feel Say little bitch, you can't fuck with me If you wanna to These expensive, these is red bottoms These is bloody shoes It's the store, I can get them But I don't wanna choose And I'm quick, cut a Jedi off So don't get comfortable Look, I don't dance now I'll make money moves Say I don't gotta dance, I make money with If I see you and I don't speak, that means I don't fuck with you I'm a boss, you a worker, bitch I make bloody moves If you a pussy, you get popped You a groupie, you a op Don't you come around my way You can't hang around my butt I just check my account, turns out I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich I put my hand above my hip, I bet you dip, he dip, she dip I, I get the money and go I just dump, my pussy get her go. Tell them, I just came over the road. I just came over the rap. Sorry, guys, I can't hear. I like to live. None of the Jedi is safe. All your dinner is safe. Only the real can relate. I used to live in the peace. Now it's the time to like how to play. I do let these bitches know. Just in case these hoes forgot. I just run and check the mail. Another check from Mona Scott's a little bit. You can't fuck with me if you want to. These expensive, these is red bottoms, these is bloody shoes. Hit the store, I can get them both. I don't wanna choose, and I'm quick. Cut a Jedi off so don't get comfortable. Look, I don't dance now, I make money moves. Say I don't gotta dance, I make money moves. If I see you and I don't speak, that means I don't fuck with you. I'm a boss, you a worker, bitch. I make bloody moves. I couldn't really hear the music because it's over there. So I, sorry guys, I got a little off a couple times. Because normally it comes through my ears, but we couldn't do it that way, so I could barely hear. So I was like off sometimes, and then I missed that one home first. Well, we'll do another song in a minute because it's early. We'd on. have to do it through my ears next time a little bit because it's pretty hard to do it that way. I couldn't really hear. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, okay. pull the chair back up. Like okay. So they want you to, to play Disneyland Paris, if you would. What is Disneyland? Know if you tour there. What? Yeah, do it. They want to know if you would do a concert at Disneyland in Paris. <laughs> Disneyland in Paris? Yeah, if they would allow me, yeah, that would be wonderful. You know, it was funny. Um, when I was young, we used to do, I was in dance. And we would do dances at the, um, at the uh, amusement parks. I remember that, like Great American stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, they would let like little, little kids do the. Uh, we were young, you know. <laughs> it was pretty bad too. We weren't good. <laughs> and I, I was always like, it's funny that they did these at the amusement parks. Perverts. Well, I don't know if regular people could come in. I don't really know if it was just for the families. I don't really know because I was a kid. But I was like, now they think about it. It's funny because we were doing like just our pretty bad dance recital. I mean, we were little kids and at, at Great America, the amusement park. Thanks for the hearts, guys. Thanks for the hearts. All right. So, uh, sorry about the song. It was a little tough being I couldn't hear because, like, I, I couldn't tell if I was I couldn't hear the background music at all because it was right by you guys. I couldn't really hear it, but um, that was fun. We'll, we'll sing again. We'll do a singing scope because I love singing. The, uh, the reason why we haven't done one um, in the last couple of days is actually because we've been so busy. So we made a new uh, video, uh, an adult video. You guys can look on that. On You can check out, if you want more info about that kind of stuff, uh, you can check out my uh, Chelsea Vegas on Twitter.
It's C H E L S E Y. So with the Y, and you're standing in front of that camera everywhere. Um, and then Vegas, at Chelsea Vegas. And you can find out more info about our newest video. Um, but anyways, so we were working on that, and then we had to edit and stuff. So a gyrus was working really hard on the editing on that. So when he's doing that, we don't, we can't really come in here to uh, sing. But today I think we could, probably. Yeah, we probably could have been yeah. a little later. Yeah, probably later. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so uh, about the uh, virus... The thing is, um, they're really wanting the numbers to be higher. That's why they're choosing to focus on the highest numbers they can, like to kind of keep you guys thinking. Like, so they're not technically lying. They're just, uh, well, they may be lying, but I'm saying let's say they're not lying. Let's say all the numbers are exactly legit, 100%, which they're not, which I already said they're fudging, but let's just say for this scenario that all the numbers are completely legit, all those people who have 100% died from the coronavirus. Well, they're looking at the bigger numbers, the ones of the people that were affected and recovered. Those are the ones they keep focusing on so that when you see the article, you first see a really high number, which is shocking to people. They'll go, oh, 500,000, and then they don't read any further. So their brain just thinks that 500,000 people are dying when really it's really misleading because uh, most people are recovering. And if you were to track the normal flu virus every year, you would see very similar numbers. You would see 500,000 people affected by the normal flu. I mean, a lot of people get the flu. Think about, like, when you have the normal flu. Like, a lot of people get it. You normally know quite a few people that get the flu, or if not yourself. This time around, if anything, less people are getting this. I mean, most people don't even really know anyone that has it. Um, and you can say, oh, because we did all this quarantine and da 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 um, but there's a good question right there. So even if you hear these numbers coming out, ask yourself, how many people do you know personally that even have the virus or had it or anything? So if you don't really know anyone personally and no one you know seems to know anyone personally, I mean, there's a couple people that say they know someone, but there's very few people, um, then this is a very light flu virus because normally you would say, oh, I had the flu or my kids had the flu or whatever, but now it's like, no, we're all good. No one got sick. And you say, oh, because we've been quarantined. But like I've said before, the quarantine has not been a very good quarantine process. For one thing, what they've done is they've told people, some people to stay home from work. Not everyone, of course. Construction is allowed here in Nevada. And I don't know about every state what they're allowing. But I know in Nevada they're allowing construction, which is, to me, not an essential business. So right there, that would put big old question mark in my mind of like, wait, is this about the virus or is this a political thing? That was the first thing. As soon as Governor Sisolak, who's the governor here in Nevada, for anyone that has been living under a rock, um, if you've been watching my blogs because I talk about the guy a lot, I don't mean in general that you'd know who he was because I didn't even know who he was till about a month ago, really. Um, but uh, he's the governor here in Nevada and he chose to give us like 45 days instead of what most people are doing, which like in China, they only did two weeks, they're back to normal. So you tell me this is not a spoof from China when they got all of us all in a pan panic about, oh, everyone's dying, and now they're completely back to normal. Their economy is already recovering, which it wasn't even that affected because they didn't shut down for as long as we did, uh, or even shut down to the extreme that we did. Now... We have um, us still in the not even starting the recovery process. We're just still sitting like sitting ducks uh, or just waiting, waiting as uh, the government just messes with our lives more and more and maybe even tack on more days if they get a wild hair. But it's going to be pretty hard since not many people are dying. So it's going to be harder and harder to keep saying that they need to extend it. So as the numbers show that not that many people are dying, it's going to be harder and harder for the government to say that they can keep keeping us away from our jobs. Now, they might want to because the longer they extend that now, the more they can figure out a solution to what to do for how mad everyone's going to be. Because what's going to happen is we're going to have a lot of people saying, fuck the government. And that scares them, too, because this is a new level of, like, people have never seen this happen, and they trusted their government, and some of you all still do, and uh, your trust is, should be getting less and less and less if you're waking up, because you should not trust people that don't care about risking the lives of their people 
for their political gain. Now, you'll say, no, they were protecting us from the virus. Oh, really? Then why did Steve Sisolak risk the lives of all of the construction crew members in Nevada and especially the Raiders Stadium where two workers tested positive for the COVID virus? So tell me that Steve Sisolak gives a shit about anyone's life. So either he cares about all of your lives and shut down Nevada and doesn't give a shit about any construction member's life or it's all a political thing and then he obviously doesn't give a shit about anyone's lives because if it's for political he's just sabotaging the whole state for himself now and he hopes to go to washington dc and leave fucking nevada here you know holding the fucking we're stuck with the tab for his fat ass big check there at the dinner table and he don't care. And even if he doesn't go to Washington, he still wants to, you know, be like, I was the one that helped with the coronavirus and I did blah, 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 blah. So it just makes him look good, even though this is a disaster. So I hope at some point it makes him look terrible. And I hope all of these guys that it comes and bites him in the ass. And at this point, I hope Trump wins just because it would be funnier because all of these Democrats are trying so hard. And like I said, I don't I don't vote. I really think they're all buffoons. I don't think it matters who's in the office at this point. They're all retarded. They all don't. And I don't mean retarded like in a, um, my brother is mentally retarded. I don't mean like that. I just mean in the in the People say, oh, don't you retard and you're offensive. Whatever, it's, it's just a word. Um, and I use it not on people that are mentally retarded. I use it on people that make ridiculous decisions that affect other people. Those are the ones that I call retarded. Um, but Steve Sisolak is retarded. He thinks that this is going to benefit him in the future, and it absolutely is not. Because for one thing, no one in Nevada, I think, would want him to be reelected. If they do, then the whole state is retarded, and maybe I should move because, man, if they reelect that d- Nimrod um, after all this, then I-, I have less faith in people than I do now, which is pretty low, anyways. Um, but yeah, I mean, they just might, you know, you know, <laughs> people are retarded. People are retarded. Um, mentally retarded people are not retarded. Other people are retarded. So, I just can't believe that people are not seeing that this is for political gain. I mean, I don't know how people are still believing that every politician is really just looking out for your well-being. Because at this point, your well-being is so much more affected by all these businesses shut down and financially. Now we have people that are going to be homeless, that won't be able to pay their bills, they're going to lose their businesses. That's way more affected than just if people got the flu virus. So we've shut down to avoid you getting the flu virus that you would have recovered from unless you were very, very unhealthy, like very unhealthy. I don't mean just a little unhealthy. I mean if you were like already on your deathbed, that's who's dying. Or people with very, very poor... Uh, uh. So what can happen is they might have appeared to be healthy the day before. You say, oh, I know so-and-so. But if they already were someone that, like, anything... There are people that have such low um, uh, uh, immune deficiencies that a common cold will kill them. Those are the people we're talking about. And they might appear to be a little healthy because sometimes people can have conditions that they might seem to be fine, but then something comes and can wipe them out. That's who this is affecting and people that are very old on the deathbed. But it's not anyone that doesn't have prior health issues. Like, it's not the healthy people that are just checking along. Those people are recovering. So those are the people that always recover from the flu virus. So if you got the flu and if you thought there was a chance you could die as if you were so sick already or you had one of those immune deficiencies, then you should worry about this COVID virus. If you have survived a flu before, then you're fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you've had the flu and you're like, oh, I know how that goes. It is all right. I'll be all right. That's how you should feel about this. If you thought you were going to die from the flu this year, before, before this all started, let's say you just, did you ever get the idea you were going to die from the flu? I mean, did that cross your mind? If it didn't, then you're going to be fine. Now, if you were someone that everything, like there are people that have to, basically live in like a bubble because they're, they get so sick that anything they would fear, the common cold, they, those are the people that we're worried about. And those are the people that you'd be worried about with every flu virus. Are you not understanding? It's 
it's not any different. But what we did do different is we shut down. We shut down most of the world for a minute, but then most of them have recovered. Then we shut down a lot of the U.S. for a minute. So uh, some of the states are starting to kind of go back a little bit. But no, Governor Sisolik wants to shut down Nevada for 45 days, and we're on day 27. That is unnecessary. Absolutely unnecessary, especially because during this whole time, he's allowed construction to continue. So you cannot tell me he believes it's a deadly virus if he is allowing construction to continue, or then he does not care about killing all of the construction workers in, La- in not just Las Vegas, all of Nevada, because he allowed it for all of Nevada. So either he thinks it's a deadly virus and wants to risk all construction workers' lives, or he knows it's not a deadly virus and he is going to allow construction because he is involved with the Raiders Stadium and he wanted that to be completed. So you pick which scenario you like to believe, but it has to be one. Because during this health scare, this deadly virus, they allowed construction to continue. And you cannot tell me that there is a valid reason for construction to continue if there really was a deadly virus. I mean, I, it, it, just think about that. What in construction is life and death that you cannot do a month from now? I mean, tell me, tell me. Who works in construction? Tell me something that you can't delay. I know it would be an inconvenience. I know these projects would be a real inconvenience. But this is an inconvenience to everyone. People have lost their jobs. So if we were really worried about just inconveniencing, that would not have been in consideration if there was a deadly virus, right? But Steve Sisolak was concerned about being inconvenienced and having the stadium not finish on time, which is supposed to be July 31st this year. And right now, supposedly, they're still on course because they're still trekking forward even though everyone else is shut down, you know, um, because Governor Sisolak allowed them to continue. And they work in close quarters. They uh, supposedly were trying this week to do the six feet of separation, but most of their jobs require them to work in close quarters, so they can't even really do the six feet thing. And, you know, they've already gotten fined quite a few times and had some, uh, you know, um, uh, they got in trouble from OSHA several times already. This project has been a nightmare. So many things have gone wrong, and the local media will never talk about the issues. They, oh, gosh. They just keep sugarcoating the shit and calling it a donut over and over and over. Oh, 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 it's fine. It's okay. A roof. It's okay that half the roof trusses were put together incorrectly. It's fine. Don Webb says it'll be fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay that it snowed and they lost five days of work. That didn't set them back one minute. It's okay that it's flooded so many times and they had to rebuild the wall like ten times. It's okay that it's on a spot that floods anyways. It's okay that they. Um, uh, that the roof bolts shot off because there was like an eruption when they tried to lift the roof because it was put together improperly and the whole structure shook and the bolts popped off. And it's okay that a uh, crane fell over and they didn't tell OSHA. Oh, it's okay, all these things. Don't worry about it. Oh, it's okay the COVID virus got uh, two of their workers. Continue to work. It's okay because Vegas wants a fucking Raiders stadium by July 31st, even though there's going to be no tourists. And no people to pay the hotel tax, which is a third of the Raiders stadium budget, comes from the hotel tax. So tell me how they're going to pay when there's no one here and all the hotels are closed. And you say, oh, they already have that money. No, they did not. They were behind on that. They are behind. The um, NFL is the only one. that. So the, the funding comes from the NFL. From Mark Davis and the PSL tickets. Mark Davis is the PSL tickets. He gets that. That's Mark Davis's portion. It's part of his portion. He's only a third owner now of the... Like, he only owns part of the stuff anyways. He's selling part of his team because he don't have no money. So he... Um, but the stadium, he's one-third uh, uh, invested in that. One-third is the Clark County... Um, fund, which comes from the hotel taxes here and from the weeklies where we live. We get taxed for the stadium, whether even though we don't want, they didn't care to have that. I mean, it's going to be cool, but like they tax people. It wasn't our choice. They just put it on all the tourists and all the locals that live in the weeklies. 
and uh, they kept increasing it too. It's been, every year they realize they have enough. So Don Webb had to go to the uh, stadium board authority and get more money because they keep messing up. They were 130 million over budget a couple of months back. Way back. And now they're who knows how much they're over budget. So the original stadium um, was going to be, they wanted it to be around a, I think the original projection was like $2.3 billion. And then, of course, they said, oh, that's too much. So they got the cheapest uh, bidders, which was Morton St. McCarthy, said they could do it for $1.8 billion. Well, now it's back up to like $2 billion right now. I think it's even more than, so we're back up to the original numbers, which might even go over the original projection that they said it would cost. And then they try to get these guys to, you know, cut corners and do the cheapest way. And, of course, that didn't work. And now it's just been nightmare after nightmare after nightmare. And um, the local media will never talk about it. They just, oh, pancakes and butterflies. It's all great. Don't talk about anything negative in Las Vegas. Wouldn't want to scare any tourists away. Except for when Governor Sisolak shuts down all of the hotels for 45 days. I think that'll scare tourists away. Thanks, Governor Sisolak. So I'm glad that uh, media doesn't scare away tourists because uh, they let the governor do it. And there are people here that are extremely angry. I, it's not just me, like, important people. The mayor of Las Vegas went and argued with Governor Sisolak. Mayor Carolyn Goodman argued with Governor Sisolak because she said she, she basically runs downtown, like Fremont Street, you know, the downtown Las Vegas. She says it will not survive for 45 days. Well, she said it would not survive for 30 days, and then he tacked on some more time just to be extra nice. So I don't even know. How many casinos will recover after this? A lot of them are not even planning on opening for any time in the near future. They're going to trickle open like one casino at a time. Some of them may never open. They may not have the funds to ever open. People say, oh, they, have. they do not have unlimited funds when no money is coming in. Those casinos lose about a million dollars a day in their expenses or more. So they need to bring in that much just to cover their expenses. And you say, oh, they cut off their staff and stuff. But there's a lot of expenses that you cannot cut down, like things like keeping the building running so they still have people there keeping the maintenance. You have to flush toilets and things. People don't even think about it. They've never thought about this. You cannot let a building just sit for 30 days. You can't let houses do that. When people have vacant houses, you have to go in. you got to make sure things are going. They don't want you to not. So imagine the casinos. They need to go in. They can't just let the dust collect. and they, you know They have to have people cleaning, keeping them nice because when they do eventually open, you can't have them just fall apart and deteriorate. And that can happen in a short time of unused things. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a vacant house. You can, if you don't flush that toilet and uh, every day, like, they can get nasty so fast, and then they won't, and then you'd go to the hotel and be disgusting because it'd be, like, this grime <laughs> on the toilets and stuff. That's what happens. No, they hey, get this. Uh, Annabelle, uh, Annabelle gave you a bunch of super hearts. Too. Thank you, Annabelle. Uh, Annabelle, yes. Yeah, Annabelle, is that, did I say it right? From France, yeah. Thank you. My middle name is Anna. I always forget about that, too. Do you know I forget my middle name? It's weird because my name is Joy Anna, like Joanna. But my parents didn't realize when they named it. They had nothing to do with that. They named me Anna because they na were naming me after some little girl. And then I was named Joy because I was only 17 minutes of labor. I was supposed to be a boy. So they thought they had a name, said I was going to be Matthew. So they had no girl names. And they were like, they knew this girl named Anna. And oh, yeah, that little girl. And then Joy, because I was 17 minutes later. But then later they're like, oh, Joanna, look at that. Whatever. Anyways, um, I forget my middle name because I go by Jedi Joy now. So I always forget. I don't very rarely go by Joanna. Okay, enough of that. That, but so with the casinos, you know, you have to, you have so many things, and you have to, you have the bills, whether you are running or not. So all of your regular bills. Imagine the bills that you guys are getting. The casino is way more than your regular bills. So um, it doesn't matter if they had copious amounts of money. That will go so fast when no money's coming in. And forty-five days will cripple ever every casino here. I mean, the ones that are going to open. It's going to be tough, even for them, on even those big properties. There's going to be a lot of um, hands turning, I think, here in Vegas, where uh, the casinos are basically going to be sold, and you're going to get a good deal on a casino in Las Vegas right now if, you're, if you have enough for that. <laughs> if you have millions and billions, buy yourself a casino, because um, I think there's going to be a lot for sale. There already were a bunch for sale. They had just sold several casinos. Um, MGM had sold about five of their properties to Blackstone, 
Uh, so they had already just changed hands. And then uh, MGM had planned to buy back in five years. They're like on this uh, buyback thing where they uh, allow them to have it. And so I've been saying for a long time that MGM uh, knew we were going to have a, uh, some shitty years. They they got out because we were already having shitty years, and then they want to come back when it's good. But then as this happened, I said, hmm. See, they may have known even further uh, because basically everyone knew uh, the, on the Democrat side that they were going to do any means to take down Trump. They already tried to impeach him. So they were willing to take it to any level. So I think if you were high up, you knew, get out if you can right now because it's going to be a mess as our country's in turmoil because we already had the Democrats try to impeach the president. That's a big deal. And we've acted like that's nothing. We've only had a couple of presidents uh, for the people that have tried to impeach. It's like Nixon and Clinton and now Trump, I think, is the only thing, maybe another one. But um, And it was a huge deal. When they were trying to uh, impeach Clinton and say, I mean, Nixon, I wasn't alive then, but um, Clinton, I, re- I remember that. And with Trump, it's like we forgot that just happened because like we have all this other uh, stuff clouding over what they want us to focus on. And then we also forgot that Trump just bombed um, another country. Uh, which country did we go at this time, Jerry Rich? What? What country did uh, Trump just bomb the other day? I can't even keep track, you guys. Iran, Iran again, okay. Uh, and then we also put a 25% tax on China. So we not only are pissing off other countries, we're also within our country having major strife because the Democrats are trying to impeach the president and stuff. So there's all of this conflict going on. And um, then this normal flu virus comes through and everyone jumps on the news to, for one thing, to distract from all the other things going on. Uh, another thing to hopefully distract from, um, if you remember, we also have um, an election coming up. So if you remember, Trump uh, tends to dominate um, the debates. Uh, he, he He's just kind of, he's entertaining, I guess. You know, he's an entertainer. And now we haven't seen any of that. And so, and now they're hoping that people just think this is all Trump's fault and don't want to vote for him. But also during this time, we haven't had the, the opportunity to see Trump's crazy t- uh, antics, you know, during the campaign trial. And that's what they want because they knew they could not win against his entertainment uh, skills compared to these Democrats are the most boring people you would ever see in your whole life. Have you seen these guys that are running for office? Oh, my God. They're just the bores. I was watching um, The People versus Larry Flint last night, and they were showing the when he went to the Supreme Court. You know, that's a good movie. And uh, just those those guys, holy mackerel, the Supreme Court judges, good Lord. I was wondering if the one lady was, uh, we were trying to look to see if she was in the movie because she's been there so long, the one that's about to pass away, I forget her name, I don't really care. Um, um, but she's the one that the Democrats are very worried because if she passes away and if a Republican's in office, then they can get another Supreme Court judge uh, to vote in their favor, and that would be very scary because then they would dominate um, the Congress and the Supreme Court, basically. And so basically the Republicans could have anything passed that they want, and the Democrats would not get much of a say. And so they're very worried uh, that they want the next president to be a Democrat so that the next president can appoint uh, more of a Democratic judge, in a sense. Because you know they're supposed to be bias but of course they're not so you want the one that you know is going to go more in your favor and um if trump becomes president again then he gets to do that and if any republican but especially trump is who they're most worried about and also she might even die now so um if she dies while he's still president that's what people are worried about um so (laughs) They'll take any means right now. And the celebrities, especially most celebrities, um, when you think of, like, the musicians, uh, not as much maybe the actors, but a lot of the musicians you'll see are Democratic. Um, They just tend to kind of go that way. Um, And so 
which is fine. I, you know, if anything, I agree with a lot of the Democratic things in the sense of, like, I'm all for abortion. I think you have the right to choose. I don't think that they have any right to tell people they don't have a right to choose. Um, a lot of things like that. But then now the Democrats are taking it. And I, and I don't like religion and stuff where the Republicans tend to be a little bit more religious, more Christian based. But I don't like either parties. And um, I don't like what the Democrats are doing now. And I'm seeing a lot of um, just kind of like all they seem to do is just bash Trump instead of ever really coming up with any other solutions. Uh, like it, it seems like every candidate I haven't watched very much, you know, because now I don't even know what's going on with it. But um, but all it was was just about bashing Trump, you know, and it's kind of like. If you don't have enough of a backbone to show me something about yourself, like I don't care about the other candidate. I want to hear about you. And we don't see that very often. It's just always like, I'm better than that person. Well, how are you better? Like, And don't just give me this stupid nonsense, I'm going to do this. Like, I mean, at least, at least I'll give it to Trump. When he came around, you kind of knew things were going to be different. And I don't know if we expected this level of difference. See, this has been insane. But most of these politicians are just, I can't even listen to them. You're like, oh, my gosh. Um, so I don't really know what we're going to do as um, the United States right now, you guys. Uh, we haven't realized that this is like going to impact us huge. We have basically destroyed a large portion of small businesses right now. <laughs> People have not realized that. I mean, if you're a small business, I, I think you're starting to see, if you, especially if you're in um, Nevada, uh, you're not going to survive. I mean, how are you going to open in 45 days? I mean, your bills must just be <sighs> avalanching on you. I mean, it's, um, it's insane. I, I feel so grateful. Me and Jedi Rich had thought about investing in a business uh, in, um, like, 2015 and 16. Um, cause we had some money. I think I told you guys about this and, um, we had saved up money. We, we worked really hard to just save. We didn't spend any money. We were, and we were totally sober then. We weren't, uh, I mean, I was bulimic though. So I did spend money on that. Um, but I was able to still save quite a bit of money and we were going to buy some kind of business. We thought about a restaurant, thought about different things. And then, um, I just decided I didn't want to do that. Yeah, I was like, you know, I just don't want to do that. And so then we ended up um, basically just spending the money on whatever we felt like for the next couple of years. And then uh, we used it. Oh, but you know what I mainly used it for was to recover from bulimia because I wasn't able to work. So I ended up using the money instead of um, investing in a company. I used it for my recovery because I missed so much work while I was sick. But anyways, um, now I sit here, and for a minute, you know, when you go, oh, maybe we should have invested because there's times, you know, you go, oh, maybe we should have got a company or something, you know, when times are hard. Now, right now, I go, thank goodness we did not start any kind of company because I would be shitting my shorts right now if I had a company, like uh, one that had any kind of overhead, you know, uh, where you have bills coming out, whether you have money coming in or not, and... I just feel so thing and the reason why we didn't the ultimate reason is cuz we trusted our feelings. And we do that always and people think we're nuts and we've done some crazy things like live in a cave. But that is called trusting your feelings. Because like Trusting your feelings will have you do things that are out of your norm. That's the thing. See the reason why we normally don't trust our feelings is cuz we're very square and we like as humans we have a tendency to not like change. Okay, get this. I'm going to tell you something that, about ourselves. Our brain likes things to be safe. Your brain is all about safety. So your brain will always want you to do repetitive things because that's safe and you know how to do it, okay? But here's the thing that happens when you do repetitive things. You get depressed. It's by nature. You get depressed. If you don't change up your routine, if every single day you do the exact same thing, and I don't mean people think like eating food. No, you can eat the same food every day. That's actually very good because things like that are good for your body. I'm saying just every day the same thing. You get up the same time. You brush your teeth the same time. You do your hair the same thing. You do every single thing. You have it just so da 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 where you don't even have to think. You know, you're in auto mode at work. You do the exact same thing, auto mode, auto mode. 
many years of auto mode and you get very depressed. So as much as your brain wants you to be safe, you can also end up dying from getting depressed in ways like killing yourself, ODing. Generally, people OD when they're depressed. That's why they're doing so many pain pills or alcohol. Those are the ones that they OD the most on. People always think people OD on Coke. You can't OD on Coke unless there's other things. I'm telling you. I'm doing so much. You cannot OD on just doing Coke. You have to have something with it, like alcohol or a downer, like a heroin or something. You know, like something that brings you down, those pain pills, things like that. <laughs> you can't OD on Coke. Um, and... The thing is, so eventually you have to tell your brain, I'm sorry that you want to be safe all the time, but the longer you just want to be safe, I'm going to get depressed. So you got to work with your brain because your brain will, is the one that goes like, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Where your feelings are saying, go do this. Your brain will say, no, this is not safe. No, I don't want to try nothing new. So that's when you got to work with your brain. Um, and that's where sometimes people get in this theory of, like, tricking your brain. No, no, you don't want to trick your brain. Don't trick your brain. Say, brain, I know you want to be safe, but I got to change it up because I'm getting depressed. And, and you know what? The, the biggest thing that comes with depression is getting fat. And then what happens, uh, Chris Farley said it funny. He said, um, I'm depressed because I eat and I eat because I'm depressed. And that's just that constant cycle. And that's what people, or I'm depressed because I'm fat, and I'm fat because I'm depressed. And it's a constant cycle because the more depressed you get, the more weight you'll gain. But here's the thing. People are not realizing the things that are making them depressed. Are the biggest one is the caffeine. The caffeine. And no one wants to admit that because everyone wants to think coffee's good for them. I remember when I was drinking coffee, every other year it felt like they'd come out with a study one year, they'd say, oh, maybe cut back on your coffees. Because the next year, oh, no, coffee's great for you. Have as much as you want and stuff. And it's like they went back and forth for a while. Now you don't see those at all. Now it's just all you hear is caffeine, co coffee and caffeine is great because everyone's so addicted. So there's very few people that are not addicted to caffeine. And me and Jedi Rich are some of the only ones. I mean, there's very little, very small portion, probably more in other countries. But in the U.S., so many people are drinking. And I'm from ch kids. I started drinking caffeine when I was five years old. So the kids are starting really young now, and they're addicted. And caffeine is highly, highly, highly addictive, if you haven't realized that yet. Yeah, I try to stop. You'll get headaches. I'll get, I mean, highly, highly addictive. And um, what caffeine does, this is the biggest reason why. I believe this is the biggest Culprit. Like I know I've said a couple things, but the, I believe the biggest one is the caffeine for the uh, weight that people are not realizing because it's the one they don't see the most. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't think it exists. Whereas all the other ones, you know, you might see, okay, I'm eating too much sugar, or I'm overeating here, or I'm, you know, doing this. But the caffeine, people think it's okay. So it ends up being one of the biggest contributors because they do so much of it. They're like, oh, it's almost like they think it's free, free calories or something. Like, oh, caffeine don't count. Because it makes me not want to eat. So uh, then caffeine don't count. Like, oh, I'll just have coffee uh, instead of eating. People do that a lot. But here's what happens when you do that. So caffeine is a suppressant. So it depresses your senses. And it um, numbs your hormones and all of your senses. That's what it does. So why you feel more energetic and feel less tired is only because your senses that felt tired or hungry have now been numbed down. So they don't feel as much as they were. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's not that they're not there in that they're not, it's just you don't realize it as much. So it'd be like you're really hungry, but then you're kind of like, oh, I don't feel as hungry now, even though you're still really hungry. So that's one of those things where you're tricking your brain and your brain don't appreciate that. So what happens is as everything gets numbed down, one of the ones that's really bad that it gets numbed down is your insulin hormone. So what happens is your insulin is used, you know, when to uh, regulate your blood sugar levels. Um, that's where diabetics are lacking in insulin. They have to inject themselves with insulin. And insulin also tells your body to store fat. It's, um, it's the thing that tells your body to basically go into hibernation, like, you're like a bear now, like you need to hibernate, you need to relax, you need to chill. So that's what, so that's what caffeine is also telling you to chill. 
So you have the caffeine telling you to chill, okay? And you got those hormones that your insulin ones are now chilling, right? Well, now all of a sudden, your blood sugar starts to rise because everything's chilling. It's not working as efficiently as it was before because it's basically like doled down, right? So now your body goes, "Uh uh-oh, I'm getting blood sugar rise. I better produce more insulin. So it produces more insulin. But then when the caffeine wears off, all those other guys that were numbed down flare back up. So now you have even more. And every time your body produces insulin, it tells your brain to store fat, uh, take all of that and save all of that energy. Basically saying, save this for later. And that's not what you want. You're not wanting to tell your body to save the fat for later. (laughs) You want to get it off. That's why you're drinking coffee. You're trying to get rid of the fat, right? So going to the gym, having caffeine before you go to the gym is very counterproductive. Because the whole time you're at the gym, your body's saying store fat, store fat. And you're saying, no, I want to burn off the fat. So you're telling your uh, body and brain two different things. And that's why uh, you have a constant conflict. And people think, oh, no, I'm tricking my brain. No. Your brain can't be tricked. What it does is it uh, responds in the way that is the safest. So when you trick your brain, it then says produce insulin for the most part. For most things, like if you're doing artificial stuff, it'll say produce insulin because it goes, I don't know what that is. Like when you do foods that the brain doesn't know, it just says sugar because everything breaks down to sugar. Every food breaks down to sugar at the end of the day. That's because we live off of sugar, but very low amounts of sugar. This is where people get confused. Like, oh, we live off of sugar, we need sugar. You need about 30 grams of sugar a day, and that's it. And 30 grams is very low. And I don't mean spoonfuls of sugar. I mean across the board all of your carbohydrates. So that would be fruits, veggies, all that. 30 grams from that. One apple would take you over that. One apple takes you over 30 grams, basically. I think, if I remember how much, well, maybe not one apple, but pretty quick. I can't remember how many, but apples have quite a bit of sugar um, and uh, and carbs and stuff. So you got to look at, I'm saying really keep your carbs low. People want to just relate the sugar as in sugar. They go, oh, I, I didn't add sugar to my coffee, so I'm good. No, sugar is coming from so many sources, and anything processed and packaged is basically just sugar. I mean, they've changed its original form and they've made it become basically just sugar because your brain now doesn't know what that is anymore. And also, um, when you change the form of something, you, what they'd like to do is they'd like to make, they liked making things more convenient. And they thought that would be good because what happened was back in, when was it, the 50s, I think, around there, uh, women wanted to go to work more. Right. So they started the age of convenience. Let's have microwaves. Let's have this and that because women uh, are, don't have the time to prepare huge meals. So we thought that would be fine. But now we're seeing higher levels of obesity than we've ever seen before. And uh, people are so addicted to caffeine and sugar. And what happened, it was the convenience. So everything became packaged, friendly, and let's make it easy to consume. Well, like I said before, if you've been watching my blogs, you don't want something too easy to consume because then that goes right in your bloodstream and now mm, process the sugar, produce insulin, you're back to that thing, store it. all. And when something is very easy to digest, then you're not using any energy to digest it. And so any excess gets stored as fat. Um, so let's say you do a smoothie right before the gym. People do this. They do their protein shakes, a smoothie. So the protein shakes, same thing. Still a beverage. Chugging that thing. You think, oh, low carbs, whatever. But it's just right in your bloodstream. So all those calories right in your bloodstream. Now you go to the gym. Let's say you did a, um, let's say you did a 500 calorie drink. And you think, oh, they're not that much. Oh, yeah, they are. Start looking at the ingredients and how much you're scooping versus the serving size or whatever. Or look at all of the veggies you're putting in there. Probably around 500 calories for most of these smoothies or proteins, if not more. Um, So let's say you're doing 500 calories. Okay, did you burn 500 calories at the gym? Some people, yes. But I know when I used to go for two hours and I would do an intense workout. I would do the one where you go to the... um, and they had these classes, and they do this circuit training. And it was an hour and 15 minutes of intense circuit training. At the end, I had my, my Apple Watch. 
I'd be lucky if I burned 200 calories after an hour and 15 long class. And I'd be like, you're kidding me. Because I was trying to get 500 calories because I was tracking our things and I was doing what I'm saying. Um, so, because we did, we tracked all that we would, you know, weigh everything. We literally weighed our food, <laughs> tracked it to that level on those, um, lose it app. I think it was called, there's an app and you put down every calorie and you, you find the food, you scan the barcode. I mean, we were crazy about it. And I would be so disappointed to find out that I had not burned off as many calories as I thought, but I was still thinking I'd be fine. But what I didn't account for is that anything that I had consumed right before then, just literally got stored to fat during that process because if it was a beverage like that, if I didn't immediately burn it off at the gym, stored to fat right then. Um, and that was if I did it right before the gym. Most people are drinking a smoothie and not working out. <laughs> so you tell me that you just burned off 500 calories by chugging that, by lifting your arm? No way. So all of those extra calories that you don't use right then – Sort of side. So I runners, um, there used to be this thing, you know, you're, it used to be, when I was a runner in high school, it used to be that runners did not eat very many carbs except for if you were a sprinter right before the event because you would get that quick rush, but you would not want to do it if you were a long-distance runner like me because you would get that quick rush and you would tire out by the middle of the race. And um, I didn't fully understand why that was, but I did know that it was just kind of like, you, you know, it was like you got a sugar rush and a crash. But now I realize it's because um, you start producing insulin because generally they probably chose something that was that quick energy, like the just a drink. You hear running Gatorade and stuff. Well, now if they didn't use all that, they'd start, the body started, and also it was so much sugar that the body started producing insulin right away too. So they're trying to run as their body's telling them to start storing fat and relax. So that's why you're like in the middle of the run, like, why is it tired all of a sudden? So I used to do the two mile, the mile on the 800. And I didn't have very good nutrition back then. And I remember, yeah, mid, mid run, but I never ate right before. I didn't do that. But still, you know, um, if you weren't, you know, eating correctly, you'll find that in the middle of a workout, you'll really hit these things. And you're like, well, what's wrong? And then people try to just push through, pull, push through. And your body's trying to sell you something, saying you did something wrong in the sense of like you ate something wrong. And like, why am I so tired mid workout? Um, you need to listen to that instead of saying, oh, persevere, persevere, body, persevere. And that's what you see people doing at the gym. It's like, no, 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 no. Evaluate why you're so tired when you had energy five minutes ago and now you want to die. It's not just because you ran a little bit. It shouldn't do it. You know what I mean? So all this thing, now we can't even go to the gym, So, <laughs> which I don't go to the gym anymore. So if you eat the way that me and Jai Richie, like the organics, no GMOs, gluten-free, dairy-free, no caffeine, no alcohol, no artificial anything. It sounds like a lot of no's, but all it is is eating the food that the earth made originally before we started modifying it. So that would mean before the genetically modifying of the plants and everything. This is before adding steroids and hormones and antibiotics to everything and pesticides for everything. This is before... Um, they started adding sugar to everything. This is before they started packaging everything. So think of food the way your ancestors ate. That's all we do. And your ancestors also didn't drink coffee all day long. <laughs> That's a new thing. For one thing, to even get the access to that much coffee, I mean, it only grows in parts of the world, you know, and you get the beans. That's what you need to think of for everything. So imagine if you had, think of where you live, okay? Okay. Maybe even where you're born would probably be the best indicator where your actually family's from of what was in that land at that time. That would probably be the kind of food you personally should be eating because you know how when you travel and their food can make you more sick because you're not used to that food from that area? Well, that's how this is, but people now eat food from everywhere. And so they eat huge quantities of food that they would have never had access to. Um, and maybe that food is not good for their 
particular digestive system. You know how some food affects people differently. But now we think, oh, no, we can eat anything, you know, you know, and the uh, quantity is the problem. So if you were in the wild, your access to fruit in particular would be very minimal. You know, you'd maybe stumble upon some berries. Some of them might even be poisonous, so you would avoid a lot of the berries. Uh, you would maybe get Maybe there'd be some trees that have some fruit, you know, a little bit here and there. If you're in the tropics, you probably have a lot more fruit, but most people aren't in the tropics. So whatever access you would have to fruit would be the amount of fruit you should be eating on a daily basis. That's why people go, well, what's wrong with fruit and veggies? Well, if you had to first, okay, let's say you were growing it yourself. You would have to wait for the stuff to actually grow, and it's not available all year long if you were actually growing it in your area it's available all year long because we grow it all over the world and you fly in bananas from here and the oranges from here and here and here and here but if you were living where you live and you had to grow your own stuff if you grew it and ate it you probably would not gain any weight because you would only have x amount and you'd have to wait for it to grow now people go Fly me in oranges. When in Vegas, we get stuff flown from all over the world. That's how they, um, for some of the food here, they'll bring in you know stuff for stuff uh, lobsters from Maine or whatever you know, and uh, or at least across the U.S. I don't know if they go all over the world anymore, but um, at least across the U.S. And um, the thing is, as wonderful as that is for the convenience, we love the convenience. It's making us fat. It's making, uh, across the board, people are fatter than ever. And I would be fat as well, you guys. The only reason why I am not is because I eat all organics. And I only eat uh, organic beef and organic greens and garlic and water. And the only variations to that are when they've been out of beef, we had to get organic chicken and organic fish. And I actually have not been feeling like Jerry Rich keeps saying it's the apple cider vinegar. It probably was that too. We got some organic apple cider vinegar, which um, you think, oh, that's fine. But I'm telling you guys, there's more sugar in that than you realize because it messed me up. Because um, we had it with the sushi. We got some, um, and I don't mean sushi like with rice. We got the tuna. <laughs> just the tuna sushi, so just tuna, and then we thought it'd be nice to put it in a little apple cider vinegar, organic apple cider vinegar, we, we got it the other day, because, you know, we didn't have many options, they were out of the beef, but I have been, I had the worst stomach issues ever since, where I've, I've been getting the bloating again, like I did in the past, where what happens with me is I bloat when I eat, so like right now I'm not bloated, but once I eat a meal, I'll bloat. I'll get like, like almost look like I'm pregnant. And that's from candida overgrowth. And when I eat all beef, that doesn't happen to me. But as soon as I try something different, like throw in the apple cider vinegar, um, and I still don't think the fish was very good either. Jerry Rich is like, well, we'll try the fish again. I'm all, you can try the fish again. I'm not, I'm sticking with my beef. For whatever reason, my digestive system got so messed up. So I find that the beef works for me. Now, you might find that you can eat any meat and most people that's probably the case mine is more extreme because of all the damage but I highly re recommend eating meat meat is what is going to make you lose weight people have been told the contrary for many years they say oh a high cholesterol they say red meat is bad for you that is absolutely not true I will tell you firsthand from trying every diet out there I was a vegan I was a vegetarian I was an anorexic I was bulimic I did Atkins I did keto uh, I did all smoothies. I did a raw. Um, I can't think. Of, there's a couple of other ones. I mean, we've tried them all. And the best thing I have found is doing organic meat and um, greens and garlic. Um, and pretty much cutting out everything else. And so we just do variations of that in the sense of it. We make, I primarily make burgers. That's the biggest thing I make. I make hamburger. I need to do a scope where I just cook. I cook three times a day, so it would. Uh, I need to just do it for you guys. I don't know if you guys are. Jai Rich, are you still watching? Jai Rich? He probably fell asleep. Yeah, he fell asleep. <laughs> I'm not interesting, you guys. He's over there. He fell asleep. But anyway, <laughs> I'll have to check later if you guys are interested. Would you be interested in a cooking scope? Because I cook every day, three times a day, so it wouldn't be that hard. I just need to, maybe I'll even do it today. Let me, uh, I don't want to have to go back and check this. Let me turn around. What do you guys, let me know right now. I'm going to turn you guys around. Oh, 
Let me know right now. Cooking scope. Does anyone want a cooking scope? I'm looking at it. You got to give me yes, hearts, hearts, or yes. Is anyone interested in a cooking scope? Okay, I'm getting some hearts. Seeing what we make here, I'll show you guys. Okay, okay. Let me turn it back around. I'll do that then. I'll do that today. Thank you. The only reason why I turn you guys like this is because I just get too distracted by all your comments and stuff, and I just want to talk to everyone, and, and I don't know, I just, it's just distracting, so I, I turn, Jared Rich does it this way, turn, I don't know if it's, are you guys still seeing me right? I don't know, it might be all messed up, because I moved it. But, um, anyways, so I'll probably end here soon, and maybe I'll start getting that cooking thing together, because all I gotta do is I just gotta move all the lights, that's why, um, otherwise it just doesn't look good in the, you know, because it'll be um, too dark. So I'll move our lights into the kitchen, and then I'll get a good angle to set that up. Um, and uh, I'll do that because I actually, let me see, do I have, oh, you know what? I could, I actually need to go to Walmart. <laughs> I need to get beef. So I might have to do that first and then um, do a cooking scope. I might have one pound of beef, though. I usually cook two pounds per meal. That, I know it seems like a lot. You go, oh, two pounds of beef. But when you're eating all meat, you will eat a lot of meat. That's the thing. And people go, what about the animals? Well, like I said before, there are ways that you can have good treatment for the animals. And when you choose things like organics, uh, GMO-free, no hormones, no steroids, um, all these things. They have uh, Whole Foods, they even have levels of how they treat the animal. Unfortunately, I have not been able to buy Whole Foods beef in a while because they have um, only had the 80%, which I don't, uh, that's too high a fat. I don't like 80% beef. Um, if you guys are wondering which beefs to get, try to get things closer in the 90s because beef can be very fat, high in fat if you do the 80% and 85%. You'll find that's very high in fat. Um, stick with the leanest beef you can get. And I found that Walmart actually has a 93, and it's organic. And Walmart actually has very good organics. I, I We found that out when we lived in the cave, which I was pleasantly surprised because I would not have thought that they would have the, the same quality. But, you know, they just buy it from whoever, the distributor, so any store can have uh, the same quality as another store. Now, so someone was saying the other day how expensive Whole Foods is. It actually isn't anymore ever since Amazon bought them. They brought down the prices, and if you're a Prime member, they often have uh, sales on a lot of items in the store. And Prime, what does it cost? I think $13 a month or something, and it's worth every penny. We are Prime members, and we use it like crazy for Whole Foods delivery, for free delivery, for all the things that we get from Amazon. We buy most of our stuff from Amazon because we don't have a car. So if it's something that, like, we don't need today, then we'll often buy it from Amazon because it'll come in uh, two days or three days. Whereas in the past, we would have gone to a store to buy it. But now since we don't have a car, we'll say, oh, we don't need that till two days from now, so let's just order it. And then it pops in the mail. We haven't been able to buy much now because, of course, no one's buying anything. But that's what we generally do. Um, actually, you know what I'm excited about coming soon is I was able to finally get an Amazon um, fresh delivery. So they're actually going to bring me um, some sparkling waters from Amazon Fresh. So yesterday I got I, yesterday I got some sparkling waters, but you know we go through them because that's all we drink is water, water. We drink sparkling water and water. <laughs> Why well, I know it sounds not fun, but sparkling water makes it more exciting because um, you get those bubbles and you get the minerals and it's just it's a treat. If you only drink water, sparkling water is a major treat. But you can't do the um, flavorings. Can't do the lime and lemon, even if it's just natural. Natural doesn't mean anything, you guys. Be very careful to not fall for the natural um, thing. It doesn't mean anything. Now, you can buy natural stuff, but it doesn't just know it doesn't mean anything. It has no uh, uh, regulation of what natural is. Organics actually have regulations, well, especially the USDA ones. But you got to watch organics, too, because if it just says organics and doesn't say USDA, then they're not necessarily following the regulations either. So you want to look for USDA organics. If you're in another country, your organics are even better than USDA in some countries. Like, I know Europe has better organics than the U.S. I wish I had uh, uh, Europe's organics. You guys are lucky. If you're in Europe, you guys have better food than us. The, the U.S. is not, we think we're known for good food, but we actually have the crappiest food in the sense of the most unhealthy. People think, oh, it tastes good. Anything with sugar tastes good. Add sugar and food tastes good. So it's very easy for food to taste good. That's not what you want. What you want is for food to be healthy. And, but 
guess what? Healthy food can taste good. The food I make it is delicious. And I'm not saying like I'm a great cook. I'm just saying it's simple ingredients and it's absolutely delicious. I'm going to show you guys today. Um, and I crave it. That's all I want. I mean, and Jared Rich loves every meal. He goes, this is the best meal ever. So I think I have one pound. I might be able to do that, but I might need to go to Walmart first. So I'll probably have to do it after I go to Walmart because I need to get over there and get some beef because you got to get there in the morning. What time is it? Yeah. Um, I don't know what time they open now. They've changed their hours, but I will have to get there as soon as they open because what happens is people still buy up the stuff here in Vegas. I don't know if you guys are having that. Uh, it's not as bad, but if you go uh, middle of the day or evening, there's not much left for um, that kind of stuff, like uh, meats and stuff. You know, the toilet paper is not being bought up as much. I think people have enough stocked up for days. Luckily, we've been using wipes ever since the cave, so that was never an issue. We buy wi baby wipes. That's what we don't use toilet paper. So I stocked up on baby wipes before everyone jumped to the baby wipes. They first were going for the toilet paper. I'm like, yay, I get the baby wipes. Now it got hard for the baby wipes, but they're coming. Everything's coming back. But like I said, the food is still, like if you're getting fresh food, that still goes pretty fast. Um, and it's not even like fresh. It's I just mean like meat. It's, it's frozen, but... Um, uh, the meat that goes bad, I mean. Yeah, it's just frozen. We buy frozen beef. Um, it's not really frozen anymore, but it was frozen at a point. You know what I mean? They've they thought it as it's in the store. But um, I wish we could do all fresh, but unfortunately it doesn't exist here in Vegas. It did for a while. For a while they had fresh organic beef at Whole Foods. And they had like 90, it was like a 90%, I think. And it was, oh, I loved it. And then it's just kind of like organics have kind of disappeared a lot. Because like I said, it, when people aren't buying them, they're not going to be available and they're not going to be um, cheap. But at, the more people that want to buy organics, so you say, I don't want to buy organics, they're expensive. Now remember, they're expensive because they're healthy for you and they're healthy for the animals. That's why they're expensive. So you might want to put your expensive thing into your nutrition instead of into other things. People want to skimp on their nutrition, which makes no sense to me. Why would you want to save money on the thing that is going to control your entire being of how you feel and look and your looks? Food controls your looks so much, not just your weight, your skin, um, the uh uh your hair your how old you look all those things are your nails hugely affected by diet so if you eat unhealthy you will not only gain weight but you will most likely get bad acne you will get um uh, a lot of people get a lot of skin things that they don't realize are due a lot of um the skin allergies come from gluten products Look up the some of the side effects from gluten. You'll be shocked. I found out that I used to get these bumps on the back of my arm, like it was rough skin. Um, I had it for years. I thought that was just how I'd be the rest of my life. I was very insecure about it. It was like this rough patches on the back of my arms. And I also had very bad complexion. Um, ever since I started eating organics and cut out the gluten and the dairy, dairy also causes a lot of allergies for people. I hope you guys are seeing me right. I just realized it might not be the right angle. <laughs> what if I wasn't on camera this whole time? Wouldn't that be funny? Anyways, <laughs> so um, as I cut those things out, all of these skin ailments went away. And my skin cleared up. I still, you know, get a little bit of zits here and there, but I don't put on any face makeup ever, ever. Even when I do photos, I don't. Um, Jerry Rich always is like, can you just put on a little bit? I'm like, no, because I don't like it clogging my pores. Um... I just put on, uh, I did a makeup scope the other day, but all I do is put on the CBD lotion. We get this great CBD lotion from Canna Hemp, um, which CBDs, you know, are weed, uh, Canna Box. Um, oh, this one's Canna Hemp, sorry, Canna Box is uh, one of the, um, strain, the, this is one of the growers, but uh, Canna Hemp. So I always confuse those two. Canna Hemp is who we get the lotions from. They're uh, here in Nevada, and if you live in Las Vegas, and maybe all of Nevada, all of Nevada, I think, but especially in Vegas, um, it's free delivery, and you get it within usually about two to three days um, if you order online, canahemp.com. Now, if you're in another state, I don't know uh, if they can deliver to other states, maybe that it's legal or what the rules are on that, but I know in Nevada, um, when I go online, since I'm local here, free delivery, and it arrives um, in the mail within like 
sometimes it's arrived within uh, like the next day, depending on if because I used to have to call. They had an issue for a while with their visa because, um, you know, it, it's very difficult right now as it's federally illegal, but state to state legal. So people are finding um, like when you go to the dispensaries, it's a cash based thing. You can't use cards because it's not federally legal. But I guess with the lotions, they're able to get some things, but they were having trouble. They lost their access to visa for a while. So you had to call and then they would do like, um, you know, take it out of your checking account that way. You'd have to give your stuff. But now they got that back working again. I think they can take MasterCard and visa again. But yeah, these these uh, places have really struggled because as we battle with it still being federally illegal, um, then you can't actually even deposit your money in the bank. I mean, so they're sitting on so much cash, you know, it, it's hard. Like, they can't just go from the dispensary and put it in the bank because it's federally illegal. So they just, um, they're having to just... I don't even know what they're doing, but they're having, you know, people, their main security is to guard the money at these dispensaries because there's so much money coming in now. Not as much. I would have, jeez, but there were, I mean, so when you can, when you went to the dispensaries, you see they have some intense security like the casinos because they're make, they were making that kind of money. They was becoming a billion dollar company. Now I'm sure they've lost a lot of money because um, tourists were buying a lot of weed. And even the locals, I'm sure, have cut back substantially. We have, we cut back substantially on what, how much we were buying. I mean, and we thought about cutting it out completely at first, but it's so beneficial. And I, I was getting so depressed without my weed. I really need it. Um, and it's healing me, too, because I did, you know, have the bulimia all those years. But I think I'm going to get off here soon because what I want to do is I want to go to Walmart and then I want to do a cooking scope for you guys. But I have to go get some more beef. I could do it with the one pound, but um, I, I want to get there this morning anyways. So I think I'll, um, let's see. Oh, they're probably not open yet. Darn it, I keep forgetting. So this, what's throwing me off is it's a 24-hour Walmart normally. But now they got all these uh, messed up hours everywhere. You got to check. And I don't remember what time. And then they made it where, like, the older people could go earlier. And, you know, and then it's later for everyone else. So I don't even know what their hours are anymore. Which, that's great. That's fine. But um messing me up because I like going in the early mornings. But um, anyway, so I'll, I'll hopefully do a cooking scope today. Hopefully we'll do some more skiing, singing scopes. I did not know you guys enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> the one today was pretty bad because I couldn't hear the music. Normally it comes through my ears. But you guys had the phone over there, and I couldn't really hear, so sorry about that. But it was fun anyways. But um, I need to learn some more songs. So some of the scopes, when we do singing scopes, I'm here learning the songs, so those are not as fun as the ones when I know. I only know a handful of songs by heart. A lot of them I have to refer to the lyrics until I learn them. So we'll probably do some of those where I have to do the learning ones. And those ones are fun, but not as fun because I'm kind of struggling. But y'all can laugh at me because I... I'll, I struggle when I first do the songs and then I get better. But um, I do that because I had almost lost my voice from bulimia and it's been helping me and it also helped with my depression. Jared so set this all up. And for a while, I didn't want to. He kept, because, you know, I've never been a singer and I am still not a singer. I just enjoy it. Um, but um, he um, set this all up. And at first, I didn't even want to sing. He kept going, oh, you should, you should, you know. And then as soon as I finally got in here, I started to really enjoy it, and now I just love it. But the thing is, it's it's quite a process for us to get it all set up. Even though this is all here, he has to get the song list going and stuff. That's why it's harder to do requests. If we know ahead of time, then we can. But it's harder in the middle of it because then he has to go find it, and you guys are just kind of sitting here. But um, anyways, I think he fell asleep, and I am going to go to Walmart soon. No, that's right. <laughs> Not to death, I'm not impressed. I'm not amused, I'm not confused, I'm not confused. I'm a grown man business, I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin', this is not for you. I'm a jail, my deep with the Kanye, yo. Name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh, it's like I'm still a day old, and it's been like that since the day, yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get up or get out, get down. Shadow, 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 shadow
Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out. Check it out.